Welcome to the Holiday Podcast, where we sit over homemade challah on Friday afternoons here at my table. I'm your host, Tammy Priest, a Jewish follower of Jesus, and it's great to be with you today as we talk about the intersections between the Old and New Covenants. Well, last week we talked about the ancient Jewish parable of the king in the field, which gives us this great perspective on the heart of our heavenly king as we prepare for the Jewish High Holy Days. And now the preparation season is over because Rosh Hashanah, the Jewish New Year, starts this Sunday night. And I have to say that some of my sweetest childhood memories are of us gathering downstairs in the synagogue after the Rosh Hashanah worship service and eating apples, dripping with honey, lots of honey. And this tradition is to usher in a sweet year to come. And the reason that we use honey is because it's something that points to God's promises to deliver the Israelites from bondage in Egypt and bring them to the land flowing with milk and honey. Now also, you might remember that Moses said that the manna that God sent from heaven to feed them in the wilderness, Moses said that they tasted like honey wafers. And so honey really speaks to the promises to take the people from bondage to freedom and from hunger to sustenance and really from scarcity to uh, this flowing abundance of the promised land. Honey is this picture really of the fact that God not only rescues and he not only sustains, but he lavishes. And not only in material things or in our circumstances, but really that he lavishes us with his compassion and his presence in our lives. So as we have this sweet and very symbolic snack together, the congregation prays this prayer together. May it be thy will, O Lord our God, God of our fathers, that you would renew us for a good and sweet year. So there's all this sweetness and rejoicing, but um, even though we're rejoicing and celebrating together with all of the sweetness, there's this undercurrent of kind of this building lament, this impending lament, because Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement, is now just around the corner in 10 days. And I realize that some people might think, well, it's unfortunate or really unnecessary to think about our sin and the need for atonement on such a happy day. Just, just wait a little bit. But it's actually the opposite. Rosh Hashanah, which means head of the year, isn't the original name for this feast. The original biblical name is Yom Teruah, Day of Trumpet Blasts, or you probably know it as the Feast of Trumpets. And I'm gonna read you just one of the passages about this from Numbers 29. On the first day of the seventh month, hold a sacred assembly and do no regular work. It is a day for you to sound the trumpets. So over the course of this sacred assembly, even today, the ram's horn is blown 100 times. And these blasts really serve as a kind of a call to repentance as Yom Kippur draws near. Yom Kippur, uh, the Day of Atonement, is that one day a year when the high priest would go into the Holy of Holies under this thick cover of incense and offer atonement for the sins of the whole nation um, with the blood of a perfect lamb. And everyone else was supposed to uh, spend the day fasting and mourning and repenting. And we still do that all day in synagogue. It's a time to come together and verbalize our sins and our need for atonement, to ask God for forgiveness that we just can't achieve on our own. And so the whole purpose 
of Rosh Hashanah, the Feast of Trumpets, is to blow the shofar over and over and over again. It's saying really, you know, wake up. You're about to face God with all of your faults, with all of your junk, and you need help. And I love that God established the Feast of Trumpets because it tells me that he desires to forgive. He isn't just springing the day of judgment, the day of atonement on us unsuspectingly. He created a whole feast with the entire purpose of reminding us and helping us get ready to receive atonement. And he did that because he desires to forgive. He desires to heal, he desires to restore what is broken. And now on this side of the cross, we can see the full lengths that God was willing to go to, to bring us that forgiveness and that healing. He's done everything he could to bring healing and forgiveness to make us all whole. And so now for me today, when I have my apples and honey on Rosh Hashanah, I remember all of God's promises and rescues. I remember his nourishment and mostly the lavishness of his love for me and for all of us. So on this Sabbath Eve, I invite you to think about Rosh Hashanah and its original purpose to prepare us to receive atonement and forgiveness and to think about the lavishness of all that God did, all that he did and still does to bring us forgiveness and healing and restoration, to think about it every day but especially this Sunday on Rosh Hashanah and on this Hala day.